Man, yo, what's going on, YouTube, man? It's your boy, Mikel, and that's AK Messing Up Pro Boomer. And today's video, we got Skyline versus Lincoln Park, Senegal Divided. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, man. Now, let's go ahead and get into this video. It's 60 minutes long, man. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Welcome back to another episode of Swamp Stories. For this episode, <coughs> we double back on my favorite city in the world. San Diego. We made this video way back in December, but uh, let's just say I fumbled some of the facts. I'm just kidding. Swamp Stories would never do that. Either way, this video needed to be done correctly. So if this is your second time watching this, I truly <coughs> appreciate it. And if you've been here long enough, you know that I'm going to have a hard time being serious in this video. So bear with me if I start bursting out laughing. But before we get into it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you're new. You can also follow the Instagram page as well. So let's get into it. San Diego, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Known for beautiful beaches, a world famous zoo, and most importantly, the wildest streets in America. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But in all seriousness, San Diego is an amazing place to live. The weather, the women, the food, the universities, it's all great. In fact, many consider it the best city in California. You may Probably. roll your it eyes is. at this, but in 2022, it's an absolute fact. Let me explain. California as a whole has lost hundreds of thousands of residents in the past few years. In fact, in 2020 alone, the state lost 650,000 residents. And unfortunately, the numbers have... I'm telling you, it's it's because, bro, it's because like it's literally because the fucking rent and all that shit. Literally like just live here for one bedroom is a lot. Literally a lot. Only risen since. <coughs> so you may be thinking, obviously people are leaving because it's so expensive. It is. And although that is a major reason, it's not the main issue. The main reason people are leaving the state is lack of safety. Many residents have gotten fed up with the increasing problems in their neighborhood. And honestly, this is a major issue everywhere. San Francisco, Oakland, Sacramento, LA, and of course, San... No, not San Diego. <laughs> For whatever reason, San Diego is not having problems like the rest of the state. In fact, it's rated as one of the safest cities in the world. Not just the state or the country, but the- I think that is true. I think San Diego in general is like one of the safest cities you can go to. I mean, like shit still happens, but like it's still like safe. Like, you feel me? Higher planet. And because oh, of this- You just gotta know where you at though. That's one thing. You just gotta know where you at. Like if you go down San Diego and you go to like San, you just gotta know where you at. San Diego's population has skyrocketed since 2020. Both Bay Area and LA residents are fleeing down to San Diego to get away from the wild streets. The last time I made this video, everyone went crazy because I said that San Diego was safe. A San Diego rapper named Mitchie Slick was not happy either. He claims that San Diego is just as wild as LA and compares his block to Crenshaw and Slauson. It's low in San Diego, but if you come to Southeast San Diego, is that him? that's like if LA was just South Central. Same LA. Is that Mitchie Slick? That. Greetings, everyone. My fault, y'all. Is that him? I think that is story, him. Same Oakland story, same shit. Whether his statement is true or that not, is him. I'm sure it's not. It brings me to an important point. Yes, good things should be celebrated. Do not take my jokes as ridiculing safety. I'm simply ridiculing the people who try to make their city seem worse than it is. In my opinion, that mindset sets the wrong precedent for the youth. When I made my Seattle video, I even had a guy try to sue me for saying that Seattle is a safe environment. Like what? I kid you not, this is a true story. So let me just state this once and for all. The fact that a city is safe should make us all happy. Instead of arguing, San Diego should be proud that their homicide rate is just 2.4 per 100,000. That's 5 times lower than LA, 15 times lower than Oakland, and 32 times lower than St. Louis. Let's Damn. just say that Saint San Louis Diego 32. is extremely safe. But unfortunately, it wasn't always this way. In fact, the 619 has definitely seen some rough days. But before we get into it, let me run the intro. All right, come on, bro. Get into the video.
The 1970s were a very right, important decade in Southern California history. That's because it was the first decade where South Central and Compton residents began relocating to other cities. So during this time, tens of thousands of new residents settled into San Diego, mm. specifically Southeast San Diego. And if you can't tell, this is a beautiful neighborhood. Many of the houses are well kept, have two stories, driveways, front lawns, and neighborhood parks. The point is that the area looks like your typical upper middle class suburb. With that being said, <coughs> relative to the rest of San Diego, the southeast is considered the bottom. Either way, the neighborhood was an escape from the madness of LA, and most families just wanted to leave that environment behind. But for whatever reason, not everyone was on board with that goal. So by 1975, some groups started to form in the southeast. Because everyone was brand new to the area and were coming from different sections of LA, it took a while to decide what they were going to represent. Some people wanted to represent their old affiliation while others wanted to start brand new. Well, long story short, the initial mm. group of guys started brand new. And it was funny, bro. That part... The housing looks like it looks good. It's to an area known as Lincoln Park. The neighborhood stretches from the 805 freeway to... Home Depot. Oh, shit. They were just right here. Oh, Phil Charter? Oh, Phil... Ch Wait, O'Farrell's right here. Oh, damn! Don't even. I literally played O. I literally played O'Farrell Charter School. We we beat him. Now we beat him. I did not know. Well, I didn't know any areas. You no know, saying someone told me in the area. I did not know. Literally driving that literally right here. Damn, I did not know that. Euclid Ave, which is that is crazy. Blocks. Well, in the early 1970s, they got together and started a group called Paul Lowe's Control. And no, that's not a joke. They actually thought that that was a good name. But after a few years, they realized that the name was ridiculous and changed it into the Lincoln Park Bloods. And because they wanted their own identity, instead of wearing red, they chose to wear green. This separates them from everyone else in San Diego. Everything they do is centered around Kennedy Park in the Bay Vista apartments also known as the dip and if you're curious that like a the good apartment. apartments are not public housing but you do have to make under 71,000 to live there one of those residents was a man named James Cannon and he was one of the founding members of Lincoln Park if his name doesn't sound familiar he's well known Nick for being the Cannon. father of Nick Cannon so that's Wait, Lincoln Park hold up go back you do have to make under 71,000 to live there one of those residents this one it was a man named James Cannon, and he was one of the founding Can members of Lincoln Park. If his name doesn't sound familiar, he's well known for being the father of Nick Cannon. So that's Lincoln Park. But during this same time, other groups started to form in the southeast as well. So let's head four miles up the road. There we have Wait, another... what the? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold the fuck up, bro. Southeast as well. So let's head four miles. Morris Heights? Oh, shit. Mount Miguel, oh shit. These niggas is close, what the fuck? Miles up the road. There we have another section of Southeast San Diego known as Skyline. For whatever reason, the Skyline area attracted families from Compton. So in the early 1970s, a cedar block Piru decided to bring his affiliations with him. And by 1975, the entire Skyline area became known as the Skyline Pyrus. Early on, they also went by the rolling 80s, but that was left in the past. Skyline Piru is the biggest territory in the Southeast. It covers Lomita Village, Jamacha, Skyline Hills, Alta Vista, and Canta and Bay Terrace. Okay, these are Damn. beautiful neighborhoods. I cannot believe how nice and peaceful these areas are. No, that are. is true though. Look how nice, like, look how nice it is, but Some nice houses. I usually have an understanding of why bad situations can arise from bad places, but how someone could live here and possibly choose to be in the streets is mind boggling. But hey, it's not for me to understand, so I'll just present the facts. Although Skyline covers a large area, their main territory is the Meadowbrook Apartments, and that's where the majority of activities go down. Well, early on, Lincoln Park and Skyline were close allies. In fact, they were known to get money together in the early 80s, and if you 
you know anything about California in the 80s, then you know exactly what they were doing. Making bank. They rolled and hustled together for about four years. Lincoln Park even defended Skyline against their main rivals. That happened to be the Rolling 40s. These guys had moved down from LA and taken over the area around 47th and Market. And that takes us to 1984. This is the year where everything fell apart in Southeast San Diego. A disagreement started over lost money and everyone went back to their original side. Rumors say that Lincoln Park denied owing money and Skyline was steady on the fact that they were owed. And because of this, an instant rivalry was formed. Ever since 1984, Lincoln Park versus Skyline has been non-stop. It got so and over some money. So bad that everyone in San Diego had to take a side. And here's how it went. Lincoln Park became allies with two major factors in San Diego. First were the 5-9 Brims. These guys are located between Ocean View and Imperial, just across the 805 from Lincoln Park. Next to join was Emerald Hills. And if you've ever been here, which no one probably has, it's awesome. Probably one of the cooler neighborhoods in California. But somehow the area has a wild reputation. That's the Lincoln Park side. Now let's cover the skyline side. Just like Lincoln Park, two sections join the Skyline Alliance. First would be O'Farrell Park, who are located at the very start of Skyline Drive. Oh, damn. These niggas are all close to O'Farrell, Charter, Morris, and then Mount McGill over there. Damn, so when I, so when we, when we did play O'Farrell Charter School, oh my. Drive from 59 to 65th. Then you have the Parkside Pyrus. This is the only group in San Diego that didn't originate from LA. They actually <coughs> existed years prior to LA's arrival in San Diego. Parkside claims an area called the Paradise Hills. Can you believe that people from a place called Paradise Hills jumped off the porch? Me neither. But Parkside is no joke and neither is anyone I just mentioned. San Diego was completely wild and out of control in the mid 80s to early 2000s. And the the only reason you don't know about this is because the media just never covered it. If you don't believe me, check this out. In 1992, San Diego had 278 homicides. That gave damn. a rate of 23 per. Not, damn, I wasn't even. I wasn't even. I wasn't even thinking about 1992. I, I wasn't even. I don't know where the fuck I was. 100,000. That's higher than current day Chicago and three times higher than current day LA. It's actually unbelievable that such a nice city was so bad, but that's how serious this rivalry was. They didn't care that they lived in half a million dollar homes and could go to the beach. No, all that mattered was Skyline versus Lincoln Park. And that takes us to December 31st, 2002. It's a beautiful New Year's Eve in San Diego. Sunny 68 degrees, a light breeze, and the tail end of the holiday spirit. Usually everyone is in good spirits enjoying the family time. However, in Southeast San Diego, some people have different plans. Lincoln Park is upset because of all the problems that Skyline has been causing. And for whatever reason, New Year's Eve would be their time to get back. So at 9.40 p.m., two Lincoln Park men head up to Skyline. They drive around the area and pull up to Skyline's popular hangout spot, the Arco station across the street from the Meadowbrook apartment. And there they spot a couple of Skyline men outside. And without hesitation, the Lincoln Park men approach. This incident shocked Skyline because Jason and Thomas were not seriously involved. It was simply wrong place, wrong time, a Southern mm. California theme. It seems like more often than not, the people in these situations don't even know each other. So let's fast forward to the next day. While at the hospital, Jason Brown gets a visitor, a fellow Skyline member named James Carter. He asks Jason who did it, which Jason responds it was Lincoln Park. Instantly, James is furious, so he leaves the hospital and goes to pick up his wife. From there, the two head to Big Five Sporting Goods on College Ave. And back in these days, Big Five was selling tools, if you know what I mean. So James gets everything he needs, leaves the store, and heads home. Big, there he plans Big his Five. Next move with two Skyline Associates. The plan is to drive around Lincoln Park and see what they can find. 5 p.m. While driving by Dr. J's, James Carter thinks he spots a Lincoln Park member. So he pulls into the parking lot and waits for him to walk outside. And as soon as the man leaves the store, bang. Damn. This incident would absolutely shock the community because no one in the situation had anything to do with Lincoln Park. And eventually, James Carter would go down after eight years of no one talking. This was Southeast San Diego. Damn, eight years?
Ugh. It's absolute worst. During this time, you just never knew where or when something would pop off. August 13th, 2004. Two Skyline members, Charles Foster and Daryl Flint, are casually walking down Gribble Street. As they get to the intersection oh, 2004? of Skyline Boulevard, mm -hmm. a white expedition pulls up beside them. The driver rolls down the window and yells, What's Bracken? Where are you from? Then Charles throws up Skyline. The driver gets upset and asks to squabble. Charles turns it down and says, Hey, it's not time yet. Then the expedition speeds away. That situation could have been much worse, and Charles and Daryl know it. So Charles calls up everyone from Skyline Piru and tells them to watch out for a white truck. 11.30 p.m. Everyone is outside celebrating and barbecuing on this nice summer night. But that's when the White Expedition turns the corner. A Skyline member from down the street yells, White Expedition, get down. So Charles Foster and Daryl Flint sprint away. So then the car pulls up closer. Thankfully, everyone was okay, but Lincoln Park was not done yet. After the incident, five Skyline members decide that the Southeast is too sketchy and they want to go relax. So they decide to go to the Padre Gold nightclub. The place is located in the beautiful Linda Vista neighborhood, right near USD, 12.30 a.m. The uh, Skyline college? friends arrive and instantly realize that it's a college-type event and they feel out of place. So they give it a few minutes, find a few girls to talk to, and start heading out. Outside the club, a girl asks them if she could get a ride home. One of the guys ends up agreeing because her apartment is on the way of their next destination. He also wants to flex his brand new BMW 745. So three of the guys take off in their cars and Richard Wilson drives her home in his BMW. After dropping her off, all of the Skyline men head down to the gas lamp district. And if you're not familiar, this is the party scene in San Diego. Anyways, while on freeway 163, the three men party scene notice a white expedition behind them. So to be cautious, they pull off into the fashion district. And that's when the expedition gets up close. Bang. Again, everyone was okay. But this was scary because how did the Lincoln Park guys know where to find them? The next day, 2.30 p.m., a group of four guys are playing pickup basketball at the Meadowbrook Apartments. None of them are affiliated with anything. They just happen to live in the area. Well, the White Expedition is at it again and pulls up to Meadowbrook. But today, they can't find anyone they're looking for. So instead... You know what's crazy? Those apartments look like some nice apartments. Like, like you would think... I can see. They wait outside the basketball game. After the game, the guys walk across the street to Hank's supermarket. And while crossing the street, the white expedition pulls in front. <laughs> At this point, enough was enough, and Skyline decided to take a different route. They opted to work with San Diego investigators. Even Skyline's top members decided to testify as well. And thankfully, the entire group of Lincoln Park and 5-9 Brim members went down. Dijon Satterwhite and Thomas Edward both got life. But for whatever Wait. reason, they both got out in 2021. Either way, in my opinion, it was beautiful to see the entire community cooperate and do it the right way. However, that doesn't represent everyone because half of Skyline was not on board with this. The other members got revenge in their own way. I won't get into the events because there are simply too many. However, here is a graphic that represents Yo. the next five years. Bro, this is what, a, this is what I'm talking about. I played a fraud charter. They're right. In Lincoln Park. All of those dots represent Lincoln Park members who didn't make it. Yeah, this rivalry was really, really bad, and eventually Skyline had to be stopped. Operation Red Sky. In 2008, 93 Skyline members went down. And because of this, San Diego became a much safer place. Like I said earlier, America's safest city. Part of the reason why many people aren't familiar with San Diego's underworld is because their music scene has never been popping. However, Lincoln Park did have a rapper named Mitchy Slick, and he's definitely worth listening to. He has old school songs with Messy Marv, Lil Wayne, and Nipsey Hussle. But that's- Wait! I guess I'm with Lil Wayne. I know you're with Nipsey. I know you're with Lil Wayne. School, so let's head to the current day. The current Southeast is as messy as ever. On the Lincoln Park side, you have a rapper who's been pretty solid named KT Foreign. You may recognize him from his hit song with Sugar Free. He's actually from Five Nine Brims, but they roll with Lincoln Park. On the other side for Skyline, you have a rapper named Killswitch. He's actually pretty hard. I can't take him seriously because he's from San Diego, but he's definitely worth checking out. You can hear 
hear him dissing Linkin Park and Brims all the time in his music. Interestingly enough, he was close with Stockton rapper Sloby and they had songs together. That's because Sloby's dad was an OG from Skyline Pyru. Killswitch talked about it in a recent interview with the guy who brings me up every single time. He pretends he's not a fan, but we know the truth. Well, over the past few years, the Southeast has been pretty active. Between the Bay Vistas yeah. and the Meadowbrook, things have been adding up. Regardless, this episode proves that everywhere has a hood, even the safest city in the country. And that's gonna do it for this episode of Swamp Stories. If you enjoy- Damn, that is crazy. I did not know that, that they're that close. And I literally played Ophira Charter. I did not know that they're that close. I know someone said in the area, like this is like an area like you don't wanna like be, I, I didn't know that. I don't know, I ain't know shit. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. I did not know that that close. I could you walk across the street and you in Lincoln Park, and then you got the then you got the um the uh Crips or whatever it was. Then you got the then in the area was Skyline Park. Damn, that's that is in there, man. That's it for the video, man. This is a good video to watch. Um, now I know where to not go in San Diego. If I do go down there, um, see you guys until the next video.